Hi, I'm Dr. Anna Saylor with Van Every Family Chiropractic Center, and today we're talking about torticollis and cranial shape. And we have Dr. Mandy Kirk from Move to Success, right, yes. in Troy. So I'm going to have her introduce herself. So hi, I'm Dr. Mandy Kirk. Um, I own and work at Move to Success Physical Therapy, which is on Rochester Road near Maple in Troy. Okay. And I work with all ages of patients, so anywhere my youngest was probably a couple weeks old to patients in their 80s and 90s all throughout. Um, pediatrics is my favorite, though, so 0 to 24 months is like my wheelhouse. Okay. That's our favorite, too. Yes. <laughs> Actually, all of our patients are our favorites. Okay, let me there take you that. There okay. <laughs> Be a little politically, politically correct. Okay, so we're going to kind of dive in a little bit about torticollis and then also how that kind of transitions into cranial shape. Because usually most people notice torticollis first, and then it's the cranial shape that starts to get more drastic, um, and we'll kind of dive into that. Um, are you seeing a lot of torticollis right um, now? I have throughout um, my practice. Right now, I actually don't have any, which is super rare for me, but for the most part, I torticollis is a huge, huge one for me, yeah. Okay. And we actually see it a lot with, um, because we do, we're a pediatric specialty, mm -hmm. so I have a degree in pediatrics, so an additional three years. Um, we're seeing it more and more, and people are noticing it earlier and earlier. Which is great. Which is awesome, yeah. Yeah, and because it used to be where we would actually hear it more when parents would notice it only in photos. Mm. They wouldn't really notice it with the baby, until they actually took a picture and they're like, oh yeah, they always tilt to the side. That's right. the number one thing they'll notice in photos. Um, because I've learned that parents really, we learn to compensate with our babies. Mm -hmm. So if your baby's always looking to one degree, you're gonna like, you naturally as a parent, yeah. compensate. <laughs> yes. And you just had a baby. I did, yeah. yes. He's seven months old and I, you know, as a pediatric PT, I'm always like, okay, is he tilty? Like I noticed he is getting a little bit of a flat spot, but it's directly on the back of his head. And I think it's from the way that he naps. But, okay. Um, yeah. I've been like, for, since day one, I'm like, he's a big baby. Was he positioned weird? Is he tilting? So, but most parents, they don't think about those things. They're too worried about making sure their baby is like living and stuff. Oh yeah. 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 Are they sleeping? Are they pooping? Are yes. they eating? Those are the top three things as a parent. And then you start looking at other things. Yeah. Um, so for kind of a key thing, so if you are thinking, I wonder if my child has torticollis, um, you want to basically, if you lay a baby flat down, you want to make sure that right side, left side is as balanced and equal. You want to make sure that there's no head tilting. I mean, it's okay to do it a little bit, but then you want to, I've always even said, like, if you lay a patient, uh, patient, if you lay a baby down, and you walk to either side, you want to be able to see them turn and follow you. Mm -hmm. So if they're not doing that, then we start thinking there's something going on. Right. right. Is there any tips for you, some to notice torticollis? Um, so usually I'll start by doing like a little baby sit up with the baby, and then that way they can align themselves. Because sometimes when you set the baby down on the table or whatever, they you kind of arrange them in the way that you want them to be arranged, right? So you try to maybe make them their midline centered, but I feel like if you do the baby sit up, then they're arranging themselves the way they want to. So you might be able to see the tilt a little bit better. Um, and then like Dr. Saylor said, tilt and rotation is what we look for. So sometimes I'll see maybe the baby's midline is a little to the side, or maybe they're just tilted more and each baby is a little bit different, but those are the things we look for. We also notice it, you'll notice it in the car seat. So a lot of times when you put a baby in a car seat and they tend to, their head will naturally fall to one side or the mm -hmm. other. So we do, if it's always falling to the same side, that's when we start saying, okay, there's a, there's something else going on. You might want to have it addressed. Right. right. So talk, show, explain the baby sit up. Would you use it from their shoulders, their hands? How would you um, do that? It depends on how old they are. So okay. um, the younger they are, the more support you want to give them because not only is the baby sit up, reorienting them to their midline, but also it gives them um, a little bit of the neck strengthening. So if they don't have any neck support and they're super, super little, then yes, support them from their shoulders and come up and down. But if they're a little bit older, a few months, three months old, you can grab them by their hands and then give them a little bit of pull. They'll kind of lean forward, pull themselves up and then help to lower them down. Okay. Good. So that's a little test you can do. See, you know, if you're, if you're thinking maybe something's going on, it's a good test. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so chiropractically, what we look at, and we'll do chiropractic first and then physical therapy, yeah. um, 
when the number one thing we find is the birthing process. So it's, there's different versions of torticollis. You know, there's congenital, there's acquired, um, but we see it from the birthing process a lot. And you don't think about the birthing process the way we do. You know, right. you want a healthy, happy baby, um, but it can put so much actual pressure on the baby, whether breach, whether um, C-section, whether natural. So mm -hmm. the neck is the number one thing we want to look at and make sure that that is in a really good position. And then that's going to look at the rotation. It's going to look at restriction. It's going to look at a lot of different things. So and what about you? Yeah, so um, like you said, the, the pressure on the baby is huge. Um, I tell a lot of parents if the baby is a twin or if they were a large baby, uh, they're more prone to getting congenital torticollis just because of the way that they're positioned in the womb. You only have so much space in there, and especially for our little petite ladies that are mm -hmm. pregnant, like the babies are trying to find room where they can, so they get used to being in a position that might be a little bit more tilted to one side or rotated to one side, and so um, that's the way that they can come out. So you're going to notice one twin is going to have it more than the other Absolutely. Twin. Usually yes. the lower twin doesn't have it as much, right? Right, Isn't that? right. Okay, so... So there's, you know, twins and big, big babies too. So yeah. um, we are finding that a lot of people are being told that they're going to have big babies mm -hmm. and they're not actually as big as they think they're going to be. Really? Yes. Wow. We, I wish we had a stat on it. Um, almost every single mom that's come in our practice that said, well, I'm measuring big, I'm going to have a big baby. And I'm like, Mm, yeah, right. you know, yes, okay, <laughs> there are certain ones that have big babies, but right. not, it's being, they're being told more and more, huh, and I don't know Maybe why. it's like they just want them to get mentally prepared. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you come out and think you're going to have a 12-pound baby and you only have an 8-pound, yay. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's kind of talk into, like, with torticollis and how that would lead to cranial shape. Yes. So, why don't you want to start? Um, so... It's kind of the chicken or the eggs thing. So um, the way that the baby's head is positioned defines their cranial shape, right? And then so if, if your baby's always rotated to one side, then you're going to get a flat spot on the side that they're rotating to. It's just the natural cause of things, the effect of things. And then if they're tilted to one side, you might see a little bit of pressure on the other side. Um, and then because they're getting a flat spot, then it's they kind of roll more onto that flat spot, so it, it tends to lead to more tilting or more rotation. I think a lot of times parents, you won't even notice the flat spot, but you notice that they're starting to get bald. Yes. Like we yes. see like their hair is thinning in a certain area, and that's usually, for us, the sooner you can catch something, the better. Mm -hmm. You know, the sooner you can find something out and find help for it, the better. So if you're noticing that the baby's starting to get where an area that their hair is rubbing off more, that's going to lead more to a tendency of a flat spot. Absolutely. That's what we find. Um, Cranial-wise, my handy-dandy skull here. So um, most people don't even think about, it. like, you know, a baby's born and, like, they have, you know, their fontanelles, you know, they have the soft spots. But for us, you know, this is, you know, a natural, you know, shape of a head. So you want to actually have most babies, and if you think about birthing process, if they're coming out with, you know, a cone shape, it's going to take a little bit longer to get their head into a good position. Um, that, for me, is a cranial issue that we can work on. We do a lot of cranial work here at Van Avery. But if you want, you want to think about all the suture spots and how everything should have, they should be able to flex. They should be able to move. Every time, it, every time you breathe, these areas move, too. So if you think about flat spots, we see them most common. For us, it's kind of in the back because this is where babies are laying down. Mm -hmm. And we're also finding that babies are spending a lot of time in carriers. They are. Yep. We're a container generation. Yeah. It, which is, you know, my goal when I had our, my babies was I took them out of the carrier as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they fall asleep in them. And you think like, oh, okay. Right. And you carry them. Into, it's easier. Yeah, don't don't wake a sleeping baby, yeah. right? So you don't want to mess with a good thing. Right. And it is easier to carry a baby around than a carrier. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But because they're spending so much time in carriers and we're, we're such a busy society and we're doing so much more and we're mm -hmm. driving and we're going places, that we're finding that babies are getting much more flat spots than they used to. Yeah. Is that what you're finding absolutely. too? Absolutely. And I usually ask parents how much time – per week or how much time per day does your kid spend in in a carrier and a lot of times it's like well you know it, it varies it's hard to say but it could be upwards of a couple hours and so definitely that just puts a little more extra pressure on the back of the head and you find like 
some a lot of times they'll say like, oh, do tummy time. Well, if the baby has an issue with torticollis and the baby has a rotation issue, they're not going to like tummy time. Right. And then if they have GERD or something like that, they don't like the pressure on their abdomen. So right. there's a lot of reasons why kiddos don't like tummy time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so like, you know, it seems like, oh, great. I'll just put them more in their belly because they're, they get them off their back. But then they're not liking it and they're right. crying. And then you as a parent are like, mom guilt. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, mom guilt is such a real thing. And it never goes away. And oh, no. I'm going into the teen, preteen area, and it is, oh my gosh, uh, it like never goes away. <laughs> I think it gets worse. Oh, no. <laughs> <Okay>. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, so let's kind of talk about a little bit some ideas to support torticollis or what, you know, stretches. What, sure. what, what would you do? Um, so, first things would be to, you want to stretch out. So, what torticollis is, is a tightness of one of the sternocleidomastoid muscles, which is this muscle right here. It runs from the back of the ear down to like, yeah, the front like this. You can see. Yeah, yep, yep. yep. So what we want to do is we want to elongate the side that's tight. So stretch the side that's tight and then strengthen the opposite side. So I work on stretching out. So I do, I wish I would have brought my little baby. I, you know what? I might, I'll go grab it. <laughs> I thought the exact same thing. Okay, so if you notice the baby is tilting more to this side, then we want to stretch out this side and strengthen this side so that we want midline to be as even as possible. So I always do the football carry first. So you put your arm into the crack of the baby's neck on the side that's tight. And they actually kind of like this position. It's comfortable for them. They get to see the world, but they're still close to mom or dad. And then you can add a little extra tilt by, <laughs> by lifting your arm up a little bit more. You can even put your hand here to give them a little bit more of a stretch. And then I always tell parents, if you're going from point A to point B with baby, put them in this position. It's comfortable for them. It gives them more of a stretch. Um, do it as often as you can to elongate this muscle. And then... Once they build up a little bit more tolerance to this position, I even tell parents um, if their neck is strong enough to try to take your hand away because then they're going to pull themselves, they're going to tilt their head this direction, which not only stretches out actively this side, but it also strengthens this opposite side, which is what we want to work on. Um, so that's a big one. And then another one that I like to do is... <laughs> to put baby in between knees so this way you can arrange baby's head in midline position and then depending on which way they're rotating so they're usually 90% of the time baby is going to be rotating the opposite direction of where they're tilting so if you notice that baby has a big tilt to the left they're probably going to be rotating more to the right so that means we want to focus on teaching them to rotate towards the left. So in order to get baby to rotate towards the left, you drop the left knee a little bit. So baby's head will roll towards the left. And you can give a little more active stretch by putting your hand on the side of baby's head. They don't like it when you put your hand yeah. on the side of their head. They don't like it when you touch their ear and they get uncomfortable, but it gives them a little bit more overpressure there. So you can do this or you can just do Every time you do diaper change on baby, you can just do a little bit of overpressure. I can't see that one. Yeah. <laughs> so every time you do diaper change on baby, you can give them a little bit of overpressure towards that side that they need to rotate towards. Okay. So I don't know if you guys all saw, she dropped her knee as she was doing it. So if your knees are balanced and the baby's resting, she actually let her knee come down a little bit and then did the stretch that way. So that was good. Okay. And then chiropractically for us is our technique. Well, isn't he cute? Like, he's so just cute. like the cutest baby ever. <laughs> and he looks real. Um, these are reborn. So my daughter. Has oh. sold them more. Um, chiropractically for us, we don't do any kind of cracking, um, no popping or anything like that. So people are always like, what do you do with babies? A lot of it's finger hole. So, and then also we have a really gentle tool that we gently tap the bones into the right position. So we'll find a lot of C1, C2, the oh very God. upper area. 
if that's not moving and it's in a rotation, that side, we have to make sure that it's in a really good position. Mm, that's so, great. yeah. And then we do the muscle work. We do some of the muscle work here too and making sure any connection points, making sure that the occiput's in a really good, most people you don't think about, but the muscles that connect here can pull the occiput down. Mm. So we want to make sure we're gently adjusting through here and the muscles too. That so, makes sense. And yeah. I don't hold them like that, but <laughs> I hold them like this. <laughs> and then strengthening wise, um, we would work on uh, gross motor skills. So I feel like a lot of times when kiddos are tilted to one side or they're rotated more to one side, then they're only going to be rolling to one side or they're only going to be, when they start to crawl, they might be doing like a tripod crawl where one side is down, one side is up. So we really focus on making sure that our gross motor skills are symmetric. We're doing both sides evenly. Yeah, because if you think about, if you are always tilted to this side, this eye is going to become dominant. This eye is not. So anything that you're not using is not as strong. Right. And you even see facial asymmetry yeah. in the front. So like if you get a flat spot on the back of your head, then the front side of the head has to compensate for that. So you see opposite side bossing. So a little bit of rounding in the front of the forehead here. Okay. And then um, eye asymmetry. Eye, yeah. Yeah. Like you want to make sure like if you're looking at your baby, you're drawing a nice straight line through the midline. You should be able to see like we'll see a lot of times you'll even notice like you see more of the cheek. Right. You see like she just said like you'll see a little bit more puffiness in the right eye or might. So you want to make sure that both sides are equal. That the eyes are in a really good position when they open them. They're nice and like balanced mm -hmm. too because you want to make sure that they can track. So I, like I said, I'll like have a mom I'll hold I'll hold the baby and have her go to both sides because I want to make sure that the baby can track both sides yeah and a lot of my, one of my stories is I was holding the baby and the mom's like oh yeah everything's great everything's wonderful and she was always on this side and the baby was always looking at her and I was like well come to this side and as soon as she walked over here the baby got about here and the, she Baby could not look at all to the right. And she had just been compensating this whole time. Wow. So, you know, she had no clue that the baby couldn't look to the right at all. And imagine as an adult how that feels. Yeah. Now a baby whose development, the development is so important right at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's huge. yeah. And people are always talking like, what can you prevent? And it's like, there's so much. Like you said, gross motor skills. It's going to affect them crawling and walking and you know, a lot of parents are more like, oh, but his head's flat, and it's more of a aesthetic thing. Right. But you think about, you know, your shape of your head to find your brain. Mm -hmm. So if you have a flat head, you're going to have areas that are not in a good position, too. Right. So we want to make sure everything's working like it should. Yeah. So. And things that parents can do at home, then, is obviously working on being on both sides of your kid, or when you feed them, switching sides when yes. you feed. If you're bottle feeding and you're always naturally, if you're right-handed, it's natural to do this. But just by switching the baby, because we always say there's reasons why we have two breasts, because babies go to both sides. So if you're bottle feeding, making sure that you're switching as much as you can too, doing yeah, both. Yeah. Most people don't, because this doesn't feel comfortable, because right. it's not my dominant hand. Right. So, but and making sure you're switching when baby's feeding. And even repositioning uh, in the crib. So like, if baby is always looking over to this side, maybe move their mobile over to the opposite side or uh, move their head. So rotate them 180 degrees, yeah. put them down so on the opposite side. Of the completely crib. flip the baby. You, you usually, we're, we're creatures of habit. Yes. <laughs> so we always put the baby down, you know, because it's, it's just easier. You, you know, whatever down in the hand, you put the baby in the crib this way. You know, it's just creature habit. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's, you don't even notice that baby might be looking at a little light with the night lights in an area. So they're always looking that way. So you have to actually make sure the baby's completely rotated. 180 degrees in the crib. It's not as comfortable for you. It right. doesn't feel as natural. And my monitor, my baby monitor is set up so I can't really see his face when I tur turn him 180 degrees, but I have to be like, okay, he's fine. Okay, <laughs> we're flipping the fur beads in. Yeah. Um, what other home things would you suggest? Um, feeding, stretching, um, helping them to roll both directions, reaching to both sides. So, um, Babies will tend to follow what they're looking at, so bringing toys to each side of them for them to reach for. Yeah, we were talking. I was also thinking about like the diaper change too. Like, you know, it becomes really natural to do. You know, we want to make sure that when you're changing the baby, you're changing with both legs equal. Mm, yes, because that 
we also had there's a connect, connection between the cranial and the sacral so most people don't think about it but the cranium and the sacrum are directly connected mm -hmm. so if there's an issue here there's almost 90 percent of the time there's an issue in the lower part of the sacrum too um a kind of a cool thing that we teach our parents here is if you are wondering if there's anything going on in the sacrum you lay the baby face down take them with a diaper off and you basically here, why don't you hold baby? <laughs> you would take your hands and you would squeeze on the outside, just kind of like by their hip. And you want to look at their butt crack and you want to see if it goes off any of the oh. midline. So if you squeeze nice and gentle on both sides equally, you should see a nice straight line. If you see them go off, there's an issue with the sacrum. And you'll, it's so dramatic wow. when it's off. And you also want to make sure that when you're looking at the sacrum, the, the line is even and both sides are equal. So if you're seeing a little bit more on the other side, there's an issue with the sacrum. And if the baby doesn't like to be changed, that's one thing. Like most babies should like to be changed because, yeah. you know, you're getting a clean diaper. Mm -hmm. If you're lifting and the baby's crying or the baby's arching, there's something going on with the sacrum and the cranium. Those two. And it's all fixable. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Um, what else can we tell everybody? Um, you can even see trunk tilt. So oh, yeah. I tell parents, like, if their head is tilting, it means that they're probably bulging on the side of their hips. So watch for, like, when the baby is sitting, if they're uh, old enough to sit, that their whole body isn't tilted. Yeah. Because you'll, like we said, with the baby being midline, you if you draw the line down to the front, too, a lot of times you'll see even, like, bulging on the front here. So you want to make sure that everything's balanced and equal. So I use mirror work a lot with my babies. So okay. babies love to look at themselves in the mirror, right? So putting them up to a mirror. And then um, I actually had a friend who was a PT who taught me draw a little line down baby's forehead with something that's washable, obviously. Okay. <laughs> a Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. No. And then draw a line on the mirror as well. And then see baby will try to tilt to match so oh really yeah okay I've never tried that yeah that it's really interesting. interesting yeah okay hmm that's a new one so okay so you know we're giving you some suggestions from us because you know traditional head shape what do they do they wear helmets yes yeah and they're wearing the helmets 24 7 so yeah, 23 hours a day they get so stinky Really yeah, <laughs> and it's so it's not comfortable for the babies either. Oh no! And you're putting like, you know, for us, it's like look at the root cause. Why? Why does the baby have torticollis? Why is there a flat spot? Why? What's the underlying cause? Mm -hmm. And then figuring out from there how it can be fixed. Right. So. And the younger we get them, the easier it is to deal with head shape. The easier it is to deal with because babies learn patterns, right? Just like mm -hmm. we do. We're all creatures of habit. So if baby gets in the habit of being over here all the time, then it's, and we start to see them when they're six months or nine months, it's really hard to start breaking that habit at that age. So yeah. the younger, the better. Yeah, and young. So like just what we said, if you're noticing, especially in pictures, the baby's head has a head, head tilt. If you're noticing a flat spot, if you're noticing a bald area, those are the times they actually call and find out the why. Mm -hmm. Like, cause they'll wait. A lot of times I'm hearing, like um, a lot of doctors will actually say, well, he's not ready for a helmet yet. And I'm like, oh, okay, please, let's let's get to the cause of it first. Right, right. Like, I, I would like to see baby before we even talk about helmet. Yeah, that's true. So we want to make sure that the cranium's in a really good shape. So if the cranium's in a really good shape, they won't need a helmet. That's the goal. Right, right? exactly, yeah. Save you the trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad. Like, you, when you see someone with a helmet on, you're like, it's like, it's human nature to be like, oh, that poor baby, that poor mom. Yeah, Cause yeah. No, it's not comfortable. No. no. So what else? What else? He's neat. I just love him. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a real baby. So what else can we tell everybody? Hmm. I think we covered a lot. Yeah, we yeah. did. We did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, if you know, we're here for you. Um, if you are wondering if your baby has an issue, that's the time to get checked. So use your mom's instinct. Moms know best. I like it's a gut thing. It is a, like, I know something's going on. Um, don't ever let someone tell you that it's not going on. If you think it is, it is. Right. Right. Absolutely. Like, you're a new mom. So like you, you have to learn to trust your gut. So if you have any inclination that there's something going on, call, 
Okay, we're both here for you. Yeah. Um, I'm Dr. Anna Saylor in Van Avery Family Chiropractic in Roanoke, Michigan. I'm Dr. Mandy Kirk from Move to Success Physical Therapy in Troy. And I'll have Dr. Mandy's information in the notes too. So, and we'll do any, we'll just, we're here for you. So yeah, absolutely. If, if you are like, I think my baby might have torticollis or I just need a second set of eyes. I do 15 minute free consults. So awesome. that way you don't have to be like, okay, I need to go to the pediatrician, get a script, or I need to do this, that, and the other thing before I get out, just call me up. We can get you in the same day and I'll just take a quick look and we'll decide whether or not it's nice. a problem. Awesome. Well, everybody, you guys have a wonderful day. Yeah. We will. Yes, Bye. absolutely. Bye. Let me get over here. There.